right, for this lesson, we are going to start learning about exponents. Um, if you look here, and I'm going to go ahead and write it bigger, we have a base number 3 written to the power of 5. So these are vocab words you need to write in your journals. Power is the whole expression. Base is just the big number. And exponent is the small number written up and to the right. Okay, let me show you another way to look at this. If I have the base is 3 and the exponent is 5, all that's telling me is I'm taking the 3 times itself the number of times that I have for an exponent. So this would be 3 times itself 5 times. So this would be the math you would actually do. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, but instead of writing it out like this, which takes forever, you just say 3 to the power of 5. Now let's look at a uh, kind of a irregular number, uh, a fraction. It is still considered a power, which is a product of repeated factors. There's your definition to write in your journals for um, power. The base of a power is the common factor, the number that's repeated multiple times. And the exponent indicates the number of times you're going to use the base as a factor, meaning how many times you multiply it. So in this case, you see our base is actually a fraction, okay? But then they're going to say that this is one-half to the fifth power, or one-half to the power of five. You can say it either way. This also means that this is one-half times itself five times. Whoops, I don't know why I put a three there. Same thing. This just takes less space, so it's a lot easier to write. Okay, so now let's go look at example one. Alright, so for this uh, example, what you're going to be doing in your homework is writing each power, each product using exponents. So in this case, you can see that the base number is going to be negative 7. So essentially, you're going to write negative 7 as your base and use the factor for how many times you see that negative 7, which would be there's three of them there, so you're using it three times. So instead of writing negative 7 times negative times negative 7, you're going to write right here at the end negative 7 to the power of 3. Now make sure if the 7 is in parentheses, the negative 7, you have to put in parentheses for the answer because it does make a difference if it has parentheses or not. In this case, if it's got parentheses, it means you're taking the negative times itself that many times as well. If it doesn't have parentheses, then you're just doing the 7 by itself, um, and then you throw the negative on afterwards. So it is important. Now what if you have a bunch of variables, so you don't actually have a number here, and you have two different uh, variables? Well, you can still uh, simplify these by putting a power to them. So because pi is used two times and the r is used three times, its exponent would be three, whereas the pi exponent would be two. And then you just write them next to each other because they mean multiply if they're sitting next to each other. So in this case, you have pi two times, so pi squared, and then you have r three times, so r cubed. All right. Grab a piece of paper. Let's look at the on your own uh, number one, and we'll do number two in a second as well. All right, so looking at number one, you can automatically tell which is your base number. In this case, it's one fourth. So I have one fourth, and then I just count how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna have one fourth to the power of five. With fractions, you do need to add a parentheses. It makes the math simpler. Uh, if you ever just want to be on the safe side, you can add parentheses if you want to. All right, now let's look at number two. Again, we have two different types of bases here. We have the point three as a base, and we have x as a base. So we're going to have 0 0.3, and then we're going to have x. But if we look at this, how many 0 0.3s do we have? We have four of them. So I'm going to put this in parentheses and say four, and then 
x, we have two of them. Variables you don't need to ever put in parentheses. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. All right, so there's your two final answers. All right, let's look at our next example. All right, so now we're going to evaluate the expression. When you hear the word evaluate, just think solve. So we have simplified this because it would have been negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 four times. Um, the factor number is negative 2 where the exponent is 4. So you could rewrite it out if you want. Negative 2 times itself four times. But what you're going to do is you see you have a negative times a negative, which makes it a positive, and then another negative times a negative, which makes that positive. So essentially you end up with 4 times 4, both positive, which gives you the positive 16. Okay, you may use your calculator as well. If you put negative 2 in parentheses in your calculator and then say to the power of 4, it will come out with 16. Uh, if you can't find the exponent button on your calculator, you could just do negative 2 times itself four times. Still would come out correctly. It's vitally important with the parentheses, though, because of that negative. It'll mess you up if you don't do that. All right, so let's look at B. This one, you see how the negative 2 doesn't have parentheses? That means we just apply the power of 4 just to the 2. We don't apply it to the negative number. So that's like saying negative and then in parentheses 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Well again, 2 times itself 4 times is 16, but now you're going to have a negative 16 because you just apply the negative after you have done the problem. Okay, so again, this is the difference with parentheses and non-parentheses. Alright, so let's do the next on your own. Okay. So now you have a, I forgot we had another example, so we're going to do that first. So come back to your journals real quick. Sorry about that. So for this one, evaluate the expression. It is really important you remember PEMDAS. I'm going to write it up here top. If you don't have it written, write it down. So the first thing we look for is parentheses. We do not have any. So then here's where exponents come in. We haven't dealt with a lot of exponents, so you haven't, you know, you kind of skip that usually. Well, now we're going to do the exponents first. So that's where you're going to do the 3 to the power of 4 first. 3 to the power of 4 equals 81. You can see here we've simplified that part. So, and then we just rewrote 3 plus 2 in front of it. So now multiply, divide is next, right? Well, there's no, uh, it just goes left to right. So we skip the 3, and we're going to do 2 times the 81. Well, 2 times 81 is 162. Just rewrite the 3, and this is our last step, which is addition or subtraction. We can do addition, so 3 plus 162 is 165, so this would be your answer for this expression. Let's do one more. This is example 3 in your journals, by the way, 3a and b. All right, so again, start with parentheses. So you don't have parentheses, so then you go to exponents. You're actually going to simplify both of these exponents before we continue. So it doesn't really matter, matter which one you do first. But I always start left to right. So 3 to the power of 3 is 27. You can see here we've simplified that. 8 to the power of 2, you just leave that uh, subtraction in between because it's not in parentheses. So 8 to the power of 2 is 8 times 8, so that gives you your 64. And then you rewrite the divided by 2. Now, according to PEMDAS, we do multiply, divide next. I know it's, you, you kind of think, oh, I should just do 27 minus 64. No. You've got to do multiply, divide first. So you're going to take that 64 and divide it by 2. That's going to give you 32. Now we do subtraction. 27 minus 32 is going to give you a negative number of negative 5. Okay? These can be really simple if you will take the time to write it out. If you want to try and do it all in your head, that's where you kind of make mistakes. Uh, with math, I highly recommend you write it out. It's easier to keep track of where you're at. And it really doesn't take that long. All right, now let's go do the on your owns. All right, so let's work through each of these. Number three, this is on your papers, so make sure you have your paper. We have negative five to the power of four. Now is the parenthesis, is there a parenthesis? No. So we're, we know the negative is just going to be there uh, uh, attached to it after we've done the math. 
So on your calculators, you're going to say 5 to the power of 4. Now on different calculators, it looks different. Um, it can be a little triangle without the base of it, so it's kind of like a part of an arrow. On my calculator, it's y to the power of x. So I'm going to say it has a little y and then a little x exponent. So I would say y, click that button that says y to the power of x, and say 4. So that gives me 625. Or you could go on your calculator and go 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 if you don't have an exponent button. It'll work either way. Okay, but there's your answer for the first one. All right, now fractions. They are a little trickier to deal with. Um, this one includes the negative on the inside, so you will do negative times negative times negative. Well, we can pre-do that if you want, because a negative times a negative would make it positive, right? But then I'm going to multiply that times a negative, which a positive times a negative always equals negative. So we already know my answer is negative. So now we just deal with the exponent and the fraction. Well, when you have a fraction, this exponent of 3 applies to both numbers in here. So it's like saying 1 to the power of 3 over 6 to the power of 3. Okay, so 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1, but I want you to realize that because not always will you have 1 on top and you need to do the exponent. And then on the bottom we do 6 times 6, which is 36, times 6, which would be 216. Okay, so that's your final answer, negative 1 over 216. Now had this number been any other number than 1, then this top number would also have changed. So that's why I want you to understand that. All right, let's do number five. Now you see these straight bars, those mean absolute value, if you recall. Absolute value changes anything inside of it to a positive number. So once we get it all done, it might change. If it is negative, it'll change it to positive. But let's practice this. So first we start with exponents. So 3 to the power of 3 would be 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 would be 27. And then negative times a negative, oh, well, that one's not in parentheses, so this would just be negative 27 divided by 27. Then we find the absolute value of that. Well, negative 27 divided by negative 27 is just negative 1. Here's where the absolute values come into play. If you have the absolute value of a negative number, all it does is make it positive. So your final answer is 1. All right, let's do the last one, number 6. 9 minus 2 to the power of 5 times 0. 0.5. What is the first thing we're going to do here? Well, according to PEMDAS, we are going to do the exponents because we don't have any parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to simplify is that 2 to the power of 5. So I'm just going to rewrite 9 minus, and then what is 2 to the power of 5? which would give me 32 times 0.5. Okay, according to PEMDAS, multiply and divide is next. So we're going to multiply that 32 times 0.5. So I rewrite 9 minus and then have 16. So then I just do 9 minus 16 as my final, and I'll get a negative 7. Okay, so again, Make sure you have a good handle on PEMDAS. And then remember the multiply, divide, and the add, subtract are from left to right. All right, I think I have another example. Yes, one more example. All right. In sphering, <laughs> this is one of those balls you get in and you can roll down the hill. Um, human bowling. Anyhow, a person is secured inside a small hollow sphere that is surrounded by a larger one. The space between the spheres is inflated with air. What is the volume of the inflated space? Okay, we haven't done a lot of volume, so they're going to give you, the, here's your formula. Write this in your journal. So this is how to find the volume of a circle, volume of a sphere. <clears throat> so make sure you have that formula, you're going to need it. And then for pi, you just put in 3.14. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is you find the volume of the entire sphere, 
Then you find the volume of the inner sphere and subtract that away, because that will give you just the part of the um, blow-up sphere um, that's filled with air. So we know that the diameter of this circle is 3 meters, right? The whole way across the big circle is 3 meters. So we're going to plug in 3. Where where did they get? Oh, they did half of that. Oh, that's radius. They caught me. I messed up there. See, it's easy to make silly mistakes. The diameter is 3, but we need the radius. So you do half of 3, which is 1.5. So you plug in 1.5 for the radius is, and then we solve this. So we, again, have to start with the exponent. So I'm going to simplify the 1.5 to the power of 3. Do that on your calculators, you should get 3.375. And now we just multiply these three against each other. 4 thirds times pi, which is 3.14, times 3.375. Once you've multiplied those in your calculator, you should get 14.13. So this is the air of the entire sphere, as if there was no inner sphere. I'll give you a second to make sure you've written all that down in your journals. If you need to pause, you can. Okay, so now we need to find the volume of the inner sphere so we can subtract it. So, same formula. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And you see that the diameter of the little sphere, the inner sphere, is 2 meters. Well, we need the radius, so you divide by one, uh, 2 and you get 1. Plug that in. Well, 1 cubed is 1 times 1 times 1, which is still 1. So then you get 4 thirds times pi times 1. So whatever 4 thirds times 3.14 should give you 4.19. So now all you have left to do is subtract that 4.19 from the 14.13 to get our final answer of 9.94 cubic meters. We had learned about vol um, surface areas, which was always squared. Volume, you're always going to deal with cubed. So that's how you label. 9.94 cubic meters. Okay, uh, grab your paper. Let's do on your own number seven. All right, for this one, what if in example four that we just did, the diameter of the inner sphere is 1.8 meters? So let me just write, that way you don't have to, I mean, you can look at your journals. The outer sphere, sounds like some weird space term. The outer sphere, we found out was 14.8. 13. Okay, and then we're using the formula V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And they're telling me the difference here is the diameter of the inner sphere is 1.8. It was 2, remember? So we're going to have to find the radius. So you get 1.8 and divide it by 2, and you get 0.9. Okay, so now we just need to solve this. So we're going to say the volume, this is the inner sphere, is 4 thirds times pi times 0 0.9 cubed. So 0 0.9 cubed is 0.729. Okay, and then I just rewrite. And now I'm going to multiply 4 thirds times pi times that 0.729. Okay, and you're going to get a longer number than this, but you can um, round it. So now this was the inner sphere. So we're going to subtract the 14.13 minus 3.05 to get approximately 11.808, and then this is meters cubed or cubed meters, however you want to say that. Okay, so new formula. Make sure you've got this in your journal somewhere. This is the volume of a sphere. I would write that down. Um, exponents, you pretty much deal with exponents first. The only thing that trumps exponents is um, parentheses, PEMDAS. Make sure you have that written down.
All right, this is lesson 13.1. Uh, you have completed OYO, numbers 1 through 7. Do the practice and problem solving numbers 3 through 16. And also 20, whoa, that was a weird 21, 21 through 26. All right.